Earth is the only planet we know that has continents. Actually, it's the only object we know of in the solar system. And we know that the continents on the planet are actually exceptionally important for the maintenance of a lot of stability on the surface, including, of course, the maintenance of the biosphere. The life depends on the continents and the idea referred to as the plate tectonics, the recycling of the continents and the materials within them. But even today, the scientists are still not entirely clear why Earth is the only object that has these features. Why not Venus? Why not Mars? Why not, for example, objects like Titan? And although it has been suggested that objects like Pluto might have their own version of plate tectonics and continents, at the moment all of these are just speculations without concrete proof. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a completely new study that sort of builds its findings on previous discoveries about this topic, and potentially identifies a very important source of the formation of early continents on the planet from the time when the planet just had one major continent, the supercontinent, with the main culprit in this case very likely being some kind of a major asteroid that collided with the planet a long time ago, over 3 billion years ago, that ended up cracking the crust in just the right way and essentially creating over 30 separate pieces of objects that we now refer to as cretons. So we're going to be basically talking a little bit more about geology of our planet and how it sort of eventually resulted in the biosphere and life on Earth. But I guess let's start with the basics. And here I wanted to go back to the simulation I've used many times that kind of helps us simulate how continents used to look like up to about 700 million years ago. The wonderful simulation created by Ian Webster. You can find this in the description below. So 750 million years ago, Earth might have sort of resembled something like this. But throughout the Earth's history, it actually had periods where there were these really, really large supercontinents where a lot of pieces were essentially together. This right here is Panotia 600 million years ago. This right here is Pangea approximately 240 million years ago. And there's actually been quite a few of them going back a few billion years. As a matter of fact, it's believed that one of the first ones was a hypothetical supercontinent known as Ur, or another supercontinent known as Valbara. It's unclear if this is actually the same continent, but both might have existed back in the days. And Valbara in this case is particularly interesting because we actually have these two pieces that you see right here that are definitively known to have been connected approximately 3 billion years ago into one supercontinent. And these two pieces, one located in South Africa and one located in Northwest Australia, are essentially what we usually refer to as cretons. Cretons? Cretons? I don't know. It's actually funny because this word is pronounced differently depending on where you go. Anyway, the cretin we're particularly interested in is this one right here, the Pilbara cretin. And it's interesting for so many different reasons, but today we're talking about just one of them. For example, back in the days, and actually a few years ago, we've discussed the discovery of one of the earliest signs of life located in this cretin. Anton, what's a cretin? Oh yeah, I forgot to explain. Okay, cretin in a nutshell is sort of like a huge chunk of continental crust, usually an extremely ancient one and usually also a very dense one that hasn't changed much in a very long time. I guess you can think of it as an extremely large rock. Although maybe that's not the best explanation here, but the analogy is sort of there. And today it's known that there are at least 35 of these on the planet. Here's a rough map showing all 35 of them and all sort of connected into larger pieces. And generally each of these cratons will then connect, forming one of the continents. Or the continents themselves usually contain other material as well. But cretins in this case are sort of these inseparable pieces that have been in existence for up to three and a half billion years, with many of them also containing some of the oldest deposits on the planet. And Pilbara cretin right here seems to contain the oldest we've discovered so far. Most of them seem to be anywhere from two and a half to 3.6 billion years old. And this is where back in 2017, the scientists discovered signs of early life. But this cretin was also connected to that one at some point, and they essentially formed some kind of a larger continent that very likely existed over three and a half billion years ago. As a matter of fact, modern uh, ideas suggest that prior to this, the entire planet was basically just this one large chunk, one large continent. But then three and a half billion years ago, something happened and the chunk fell apart forming these smaller cratons that started to circulate around the planet because of the differences in density and because some of these uh, denser rocks were basically floating 
on top of the mantle and eventually started forming and also reforming various continental shelves. Now some of these shelves are still mysterious to us, like for example we still don't really know why exactly some of these continents reconnected into one large one approximately 240 million years ago and then once again disconnected creating the continents we have today, but that's not a question we can answer yet. But it seems that we can maybe answer the question of how the first continents formed and how the first supercontinent broke apart. And it might have involved one of these. A really really large asteroid or potentially a really large comet that collided with the planet around the time when a lot of objects in the solar system were essentially bombarded by many different asteroids, the period known as the heavy bombardment period, which essentially led to the formation of various craters on the moon, but in case of Earth it might have actually led to the formation of the first continents on the planet. So essentially one of the reasons this even happened was potentially because of a very large collision. And the scientists in the study make a pretty strong point for this. And they use the rocks, specifically the samples, from one of these cratons located in Australia. So first of all, as I mentioned, this location in Australia contains some of the oldest rocks on the planet. And so studying the composition of various types of zircon crystals located in these rocks allowed the scientists to kind of see what happened back in the days in order to form these particular crystals. And normally by studying various types of oxygen isotopes located in zircon crystals and specifically looking at the ratios of oxygen 18 and oxygen 16, it becomes possible to work out the formation temperature when these crystals were created. And in this case the scientists took a look at 26 separate samples containing various types of zircon that were created between 3.6 and 2.9 billion years ago. In the process discovering that these crystals might have been created in three separate stages, with the first stage very likely involving huge amounts of melting in this early crust. Melting that very likely occurred because of an extremely large collision early on. With the rock being so large and the collision being so powerful that it essentially created these cratons we have today. Although in this case this was just one of these collisions, chances are because this was a period of the bombardment of the entire planet, it might have happened in several locations around the planet, in the process creating several of these locations with several major impacts on the planet. Followed by the second stage in the formation of crystals that resulted in the stabilization of the crustal nucleus, followed by the third stage when we essentially started getting first plate tectonics, first continental drift, and a period of melting and formation of granite. Or in other words, the evidence from these crystals suggests that these really large collisions early on most likely created huge cracks in the continental crust and eventually forced the continents to start drifting apart. And this began the process of the recycling of the materials on the planet as the plate tectonics were born. Although it's obviously unclear why this only happened here and not on other planets. We know that Mars and Venus have also received a lot of collisions based on the evidence we see from craters, but they didn't seem to have the same effect. Or the one potential explanation here is in regards to the mass of the planet. It required some of the most massive fragments to collide with the planet in order to start all of this. Smaller asteroids and smaller rocks would just not be enough. And so in this case it might have been just once again a bit of luck and a bit of just the right size at the right time. Although I guess this particular part is still going to remain a mystery. Nobody really knows why Earth, why not Mars, why not Venus. But because Pilbara Craton is just one of 35 known cratons on the planet, it doesn't mean that this is exactly how the other ones were formed as well. It's an implication, but it's not the proof just yet. And so if the scientists find similar evidence in these other cratons, it will definitely make a pretty strong case. For now it only seems to suggest that a very large collision created the Australian Kraton. And here's a fun fact about Kratons around the planet. As I mentioned previously, these are essentially some of the oldest formations on the planet. They haven't changed for billions of years. And some of them have formed into these really large, really massive and super dense objects that actually tend to sink deeper than the rest of the continent. Many of these cratons even end up touching the mantle where the temperatures are super super hot. And because of this they actually tend to interact with the mantle and the material in these cratons tend to form things that don't form anywhere else on the planet. And one of many such formations are diamonds. 
the vast majority of all diamonds on the planet seem to have formed in these cratons, specifically as they sort of force these unusual crystals to form based on the interaction of silicates and carbon, with some of these formations then making their way to the surface one way or another. And so cratons are actually geologically super important for a lot of different industries. That's where we usually find a lot of very interesting materials. But from the perspective of biology and the evolution of the planet, they might have also been crucial to the formation of life on the planet and to the formation of plate tectonics. But because it's a mystery, I'm going to be coming back to this and discussing this in some of the future videos. Subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.